five, four, three, two, one. Greetings, Facebook Live. Ben Axelrod, Matt Florjancic coming to you live from WKYC Studios. Uh, Matt, just 10 minutes here about before kickoff between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets out in uh, New Jersey. And here we are eight days later uh, after uh, the Browns week one, 43 to 13 loss to the Tennessee Titans just down the road at First Energy Stadium. And uh, we knew this was going to be a big game coming into it when, when you saw it on the schedule. But uh, I think it obviously goes without saying that last week's loss and, and not only the loss, but the nature of that loss really kind of puts a bigger spotlight on the Browns in Monday Night Football. Yeah, no question. Uh, the eyes of the football world were already on the Browns for a variety of reasons. They knew they would have the nation's attention because it was a Monday Night Football game. Now they have a chance to erase what happened last week uh, and put that as a distant memory. And realistically, this team uh, self-destructed in that week one game. 18 penalties, 182 yards yeah. in infractions. They have to play a more disciplined game, and they have to put all the ancillary stuff aside if they want to even up their record at 1-1 one one going into the next Sunday night's game against the Rams. Yeah, I, I think if you want to look at the, the bright spot for this team, it was if, if you go back and rewatch this game, and, and I know Baker Mayfield and, and Freddie Kitchens have said things to the same effect, they were in it heading into the fourth quarter. I mean, th that was a competitive game. What's not promising is the way they, they quit out there on the field and the way that game just got away from them and, and turned into their worst season opening loss since 1999. So uh, they have another chance now to, to make a statement about who they are and, and give us some more information about who they are. Um, and, and I know we'll look ahead to, to what they have for the rest of the schedule coming up here because it's some pretty tough sledding after this week. But they're uh, matching up with a Jets team tonight that's not catching any breaks. They're without their quarterback, Sam Darnold. They're without their prized free agent linebacker, C.J. Mosley, uh, with, without one of their wide receivers. This is a very banged up New York Jets team that the Browns are going to be taking on. And uh, we've seen that in the way the point spread has been affected. The Browns opened as a, a two and a half point favorite. And in some sports books, they're all the way up to a seven point favorite now on the road. Yeah, and you know you get three points when you're playing right. home. So that tells you just how uh, much confidence people have in this Browns team to go in against a very banged up Jets team and handle their business. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the Browns to get things going in the right mm -hmm. direction. And if they're unable to do that, then all of a sudden you start playing that game where you're looking like, okay, what's going to be the first win? And mm -hmm. nobody – in Cleveland and not especially in our newsroom thought that we'd even have to worry about that. So right. hopefully they take care of business tonight against the banged up jet squad. Uh, they handle their business. It's not going to be easy though. Uh, Trevor Simeon is a serviceable quarterback has a winning record in the NFL in 24 starts. He's 13 and 11. All that came with the Denver Broncos. He hasn't taken a meaningful NFL snap uh, since the end of the 2017 season. So he's going to have to shake off a little ring rust, if you will. Mm -hmm. But still, he's he's got some playmaking ability in there. And the Browns are going to have to figure out a way to keep Robbie Anderson from making, you know, down yeah. the field plays. And also they're going to have to pick up some tight ends because the best – friend of a quarterback who is pressed into service mm -hmm. during a game or directly ahead of a game is the tight end and the slot receiver. Yeah, and, and um, you mentioned Trevor Simeon, and they have Le'Veon Bell back there in the backfield. He's going to play in this game. Uh, he was the, uh, a workhorse running back for them last week, uh, the backup Ty Montgomery. I don't think he received a, a single true carry, only had about four snaps. So uh, they're going to lean on Le'Veon Bell, a guy who's obviously plenty familiar with uh, the Cleveland Browns from his time with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, Le'Veon Bell was one of the bigger uh off-season acquisitions, and another one is obviously Odell Beckham Jr. making his return to New York. Uh, feels like Odell has a pretty strong history in these primetime games, and I would imagine uh, he's going to have a little uh, a little pep in his step being back in his former home stadium. Yeah, no question uh, Odell's going to be very amped up for this game. I don't think he goes into any game not yeah. amped up, truthfully. I think he looks forward to the game day challenge and all that presents itself. But I think he's going to want to prove a point to the mm -hmm. New York media uh, who, you know, every athlete in New York has an on-again, off-again relationship with the New York media, whether yeah. they're hot or not. Um, but I think he's going to try to prove some things, uh, not only to them, but also to the Giants, uh, because 
they're likely going to be watching part of this game, at least the players are, and he's going to want to show that he's still a pro bowler and they gave up on him too soon. Yeah, uh, speaking of Odell, uh, no shortage of trash talk heading into this week. Uh, yeah. we, we've both written about it. And uh, old Greg Williams, I'm surprised uh, we, it took us four or five minutes to get <laughs> to Greg. Uh, we knew he would be a storyline heading into this game, the Browns' former defensive coordinator and interim coach for the final eight games of last season. Uh, Odell had some interesting quotes about Greg and uh, maybe in, not even implying, directly stating no, that he hasn't it, gotten yeah. away <laughs> from his bounty gate ways. And uh, Greg fired back and I, I thought, you know, the, the headline was Odell who? And that's just a silly thing to say in today's day and age. But, but I thought that was just as interesting was he downplayed how dynamic of a player Odell Beckham Jr. was. When, when asked about Odell being one of the more dynamic players in the league, he pointed out that if he's so dynamic, then why did the New York Giants trade him? Yeah, he, that was a, a return fire across <laughs> yeah. the bow. I mean, uh, Odell rocked the boat, and then Greg, you know, he's not one to hold back. When Greg yeah. Williams has something to say, generally the world knows about it. And uh, actually there was a documentary done about the Saints that – Sean Payton was upset with some comments that he made during Super Bowl week, and he sent him crackers and peanut butter before the press engagement the next day. So Greg is not one to shy away from that, and uh, he fired right back. And, man, that uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to meet at – uh, at yeah. the 50 before the game, but uh, there might be a glance or two that get exchanged yeah. from the sideline to field. Well, I will say it's a, it's a shame Demarius Randall is missing this game uh, with a concussion, not only because of obviously him having a concussion, but uh, he had implied, I, I believe, in one of his uh, interviews he did over the offseason, I think it was with Bleacher Report, that if he intercepted a pass against the Jets, he had something up his sleeve uh, for Greg, much like he did for Hugh Jackson when he made that yeah. uh, pick against the Bengals last year. So, And, and he had plenty to say uh, before he suffered the concussion. Uh, he talked to the media at early in practice week last week and was asked, you know, what kind of coach is Greg Williams? He paused for a second, looked around, laughed it off and said, next question. Yeah. <laughs> and that told you all you Sometimes need to Sometimes you say more by saying nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I think, too, uh, also there's the Adam Gase, Jarvis Landry component of this. Uh, Jarvis Landry played for Adam Gase in Miami. And, um, you know, I, I don't think there's as much to, to chew on there with, uh, with Greg and uh, Odell, but, but I do think that's an interesting uh, side story to all of this. and No uh, shortage of those tonight. Yeah, no There's shortage of those. Of and uh, I mentioned Demarius Randall. The Browns are without Rashard Higgins. They're without Adarius Taylor for the second straight week. Uh, this is a, a nicked up Browns team, not as nicked up as maybe the Jets, but uh, that Rashard Higgins injury could loom large. Uh, he, he's kind of become one of Baker Mayfield's favorite targets here in this yeah, offense. A guy that you're going to watch out for tonight in replacement of Higgins is Damian Ratley. Mm -hmm. uh, Ratley saw a fair bit of action in that second half of the opener against the Titans, and I would expect that he is going to have a larger role earlier in the game than he has ever had in his career. A uh, second-year player uh, offers a lot of speed, offers some elusiveness as well, and by all accounts, he's pretty solid with his hands. So. We'll see what yeah. he can do under the primetime lights. Yeah, definitely. And, and we talked about the schedule coming up here. Rams at home next week. After that, they go play Baltimore. Then another Monday night game at San Francisco, which just whooped up on the Bengals. Then Seattle and New England. We're going to learn a lot about the Browns yeah. here in these next few weeks. And uh, you hate to call a week two game must win, but I think if this team is going to live up to the expectations that were set for them and, and brush aside last week as – just one week, like everybody wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, they, they have to walk away from New York with a win tonight. I think it's as simple as that. Yeah, there's no question. Uh, given what's ahead, and the uh, we, we knew the first half was going to be tough as it was, but uh, given the next slate of five mm -hmm. or six games, I mean, you have to win tonight. You you were. It, it it's hard to say week two is must win. Yeah. But given what's ahead, it it has to be. They have to approach it as a must win. They have to have that same mentality every week, but they mm -hmm. especially need it tonight. Yeah. Uh, two more pregame notes. Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, looks like he's wearing a $2 million uh, 
uh, watch on his wrist for pregame warm-up. So uh, we'll see if he wears that during What the, do you put in a watch that makes it worth I $2 know. I mean, I, I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's a good problem to have. There's but. clocks around, so <laughs> I, I don't know. It seems like a, a want more than a need. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then on a more serious note, though, uh, Chris Smith, a captain for this game, a game captain, um, his girlfriend tragically passed away in a car accident last week. So um, playing tonight, obviously, he'll be a game captain and, and all our thoughts with Chris Smith uh, and his family during this tough time. But um, t back to, to the lighter side of things, I guess, prediction for tonight. I picked the Browns to win yeah. uh, earlier th today, and I'm going to stick with it, I think. 21 to 10 Browns. Yeah, I think this one's closer than, than we think. I, I, uh, I agree with the Trevor Simeon notes that, that this is no schlub coming in there. Uh, I do think the C.J. Mosley injury looms large for New York, especially because you, you'd like to think that, uh, you know, one of the big question marks you had from last week was the play calling and the inconsistency in the run game. I think the Browns are going to try to establish Nick Chubb. Um, I'm going to say it's a little more high scoring, but, but I think it's closer to, I think it's going to be uh, 31 to uh, 24. So I'm, I'm okay with that as long as it's the good guys coming out yeah. of the, or the right side of that. Yeah. Well, we will see here kickoff uh, just seconds away. Now you can catch the game on WKYC locally, Channel 3 here. Uh, for Matt Florjancic, I'm Ben Axelrod. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live.